Java is an object-oriented language. And if you're going to use or work around Java, it is essential to have a good working knowledge of what objects are. So it's our purpose in this video to explain what objects are and how they're created inside of Java. So the simplest definition of an object is an instance of a class. And if we're going to say an instance of a class, we need to understand what a class is. Well, a class is a template or a blueprint from which individual objects are created. So let's say that I had the class called person and I created three objects of the person class, Jim, Sally, and Bob. You can see that Jim and Sally are different from one another, but when it comes down to it, they're all objects of the person class, meaning they use all the attributes and all the methods of a person class. So when I'm talking about an object, what I'm really saying is one concrete example of a class. So the class gave me the blueprint and then the object hammered out and filled in the details of what the object should look like. So Jim is an object, Sally is an object, and Bob is a distinct object of the person class. Let's say that I had a class called shape. Well, an instance of the shape class could be a triangle, a circle, and a square. So a triangle is an individual instance of a class or an object of the shape class. And so too is a rectangle in my example. Next, now that we understand what an object is, how do we create one in Java? Well, it actually follows a standard format. And the code for that would look something like this, person Sally equals new person. And let's examine this code closer. I've color coded each element of the construction of a person. First, we have person, which we've already identified as the name of the class. Next, we have the object name, which I've given as Sally. We have the keyword new, which is creating memory for the object. And lastly, we have the constructor. And you'll notice that the constructor is the same name as the class. You always see the name of the class twice, at the beginning and at the end with the constructor. You can tell the difference between the constructor and the name of the class in that the constructor will always have parentheses at the end because it is a method. This whole process here has a name and it's called instantiation. And what instantiation is, is it's the creation of an object. So you see an object is really an instance. So hopefully you can see where we get the name instantiation from. We're creating an instance of a class. What I'd like to do in this slide is focus in on a specific part of the instantiation of an object. And that is this reference here. When people are first coding, they think that that reference is actually an object of the person class, but it's not. And let me show you why it's not. And in order to do that, I'm going to take away the first part and just leave new person there. And let's talk about what this new person part of the code is doing. So if you could imagine memory as a bunch of index slots, so you see we start at 88 and we're going to 107. I just have the arrow there to indicate that it keeps on going and it wouldn't start at 88. It would start somewhere before 88 and go all the way into how much memory you have on a particular computer. And so what the new person part of the instantiation process is doing is it's creating a person in memory. And so we can see that 97 through 102 now hold a person object. Now this isn't very useful for us if we don't know where that's located. And that is where Sally is going to come in. Sally is not a person, but what Sally is doing is saying, I know where a person is. Sally is a memory reference. It's telling us where a person object is being stored in memory. And so Sally would be a number usually a hexadecimal number, indicating where the person object is being stored in memory. So in this case, Sally would simply be 97. And if Sally could talk, she would say, I'm not a person object, but I know where to get one. So Sally is kind of a middleman whose only purpose is to know where the object that you just created is located. At this point in the video, I want to put together some of the concepts we've just learned, and I want to do it using a common analogy of a house. So let's say that we had a class called house, and there's three concepts that we've been talking about, class, object, and memory reference. A class, as stated earlier, is a blueprint or a template. So it's not an actual house, 
it's the idea of what a house should be. Then you would have an object, which an object is an instance of a house. And so you're taking the idea from the template and constructing an actual house from it. And houses can come in different shapes and sizes. And then the third part that we just learned about is a memory reference. And the memory reference is kind of like an address. The address is not a house itself. Its only purpose is to point where a house is in a city, state, or country. And so this analogy gives us a great idea of what a class object and memory reference are. So we created Sally, and let's see how we could create other objects. We would use the same format, except for this time I'm calling my object Jim, and the last object I'm calling is Bob. Remember, Sally, Jim, and Bob are not persons, but rather are memory references that are pointing to where these three person objects are located in memory. If I wanted to create shapes, I would use the same format, the name of the class, object name, new, and the constructor. And this is how I'd create a triangle, a circle, and a square. And I could give it any name that I would like. I could call it try or abbreviate square to SQ or something like that, or abbreviate circle to CR. The name of objects are always lowercase and follow normal Java convention rules for naming things. They have to be a combination of letters and numbers, and the number cannot be first. And the number is also optional. So now that you have a working understanding of the formatting of an object, I've given a bunch of different made-up classes here, and I want to see if you're able to create an object of each one of these classes. Assume that the constructor, or the last part of the creation of an object, does not have anything inside of it. So it would just be empty parentheses. So go ahead, take a minute, pause the video, see if you could, in your head or on a piece of paper, determine what the instantiation of these objects would look like if you had to write them in Java. Okay, I'm going to show you the results, and hopefully you got something like this. Shoe tennis equals new shoe, building hospital equals new building, spicy habanero equals new spicy, fungus among us equals new fungus. So you can see all object creation follows a very standardized formulation in order to create an object. To sum it up, an object is an instance of a class, and that definition doesn't make sense unless you know what a class is. And a class is a template or a blueprint from which individual objects are created. So an object is a concrete example of an abstract idea of a class. So you say, hey, this is what a possible person could look like, and the object is the actual implementation of that idea that is a class. Instantiation is the creation of an object, and it always follows the same format. The class name, object name, the keyword new, and the constructor. And as I said earlier in the video, the constructor will always have the same name as the class. So when we constructed an object of the person class called Sally, you'll notice that the word person is in two places. It's important to know where objects are located in memory. And so Sally, in the example above, would be the memory reference. Sally itself would not be a person, but simply a number indicating where Sally is located so that if we need her to find out information or, or do things with her, we'll know where she's located. As I said in the beginning, it is essential in Java to understand objects and the role they play in the Java programming language. Object creation is an invaluable tool that is used throughout the whole of Java. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.